Hi guys, in this video we will learn how to install Java JDK Java Development Kit on your CentOS server. In this tutorial series we will be installing Java to later install and configure Jenkins, which is our automation server. But of course Java can be used for a wide variety of other purposes. So if you just found this video and you are configuring Java for any other purpose, keep on watching, you will have your recipe of how to install Java on CentOS. As you see I'm logged on to my box as root, if you're not root you can run this command with sudo and the first thing that I will do is yum y to not ask for the confirmation minus y means yes install java 1.8.0 open gdk dash devel hit enter and afterwards you will install open gdk now let's see if installation was successful let's run java dash version and if it prints open GDK version something something, then everything went well. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly we installed here. What is open GDK? Java comes in multiple flavors and multiple packages. Two most popular packages are open GDK and Oracle GDK. And even though open GDK is called open GDK, it's also developed and supported by Oracle. However, Oracle GDK package is considered to be proprietary. It has less clear licensing terms and installing it on your machine is a little bit harder than installing open GDK. And for our purpose for the sake of running Jenkins, OpenJDK is more than enough. So bottom line, if you're not Java developer and you know exactly that you need specifically Oracle JDK, go with OpenJDK, most likely it will satisfy all your needs. However, if you're sure that you specifically need Oracle JDK, let me know in the comments. I can record a short video and show you how to install that. Installing that other package is also not that hard. It's a little bit harder, but not that hard. Now let's mention versions of Java. I installed Java version 1.8. It is not the most recent version of Java. This is the version that is required by Jenkins. So if you're following this tutorial, please install exactly the same version of Java as I installed. However, if you're installing your Java for any other purpose, you can easily install version 12, which is the most recent version at the time of recording this video, just changing the name of the package. So if you run this command, that will also work. Now the second part of our installation, which is configuring the environment variables. In Java world, there are a couple of very important environment variables that often programs and scripts are looking for. And those variables are Java home and JRE, Java runtime environment home. So if we try to echo this variable right now, echo Java home, you will see that it's empty. There's nothing there. And same goes for JRE home. We need to make sure that these variables are pointing to the right places, to the places where Java is installed. So how do we figure out where Java is exactly installed? Let's start from running command which Java. That will tell us where is Java command coming from. So as you see, Java is available under user bin Java, but of course it is a symlink, it's not a real executable there. So what we will do is we'll read that link, read link minus F and user bin java and that will tell us the exact place where this link is pointing to and this link is pointing to this path let's now copy this path all the way up to jre we don't need jre here now what we need to do is store this value inside of java home variable and that environment variable java home should really be available for everyone for all the users and all the processes and in order to do that we'll be editing a file called etsy environment make sure that you are running this command as root or with sudo because you will need root privileges in order to edit this file and now it will be as simple as adding here java home and pointing it to the place where Java is installed to the place that we just figured out with a help of command read link. And second variable is JRE home will point to exactly the same place, except for at the end, we add JRE Java runtime environment. Pay attention that this file Etsy environment is not a shell script. So you cannot do your regular bash scripting. All that you can do inside of this file is to define your environment variables, global environment variables as keys and values. So key 
equals value. No script in here in this file. Let's save this file. And now in order to check that this environment variables are working properly, I will log off from this computer and log back on again. And now I will run echo Java home. And as you see, I received the correct pass to install the Java. And the same will go to JRE home. Tools like Maven, which is a Java built and dependency management tool are often looking for this kind of environment variable. And if it is not found, or if it is set to the wrong pass, this tool might not work. So in order to properly configure your Java installation, this environment variables are required. So now our build server has Java installed and configured. And the next step to do is to install and configure Jenkins, which is a build automation tool. And we'll do that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.